Hey guys, I'm going to cover just a few tips regarding exporting and baking low and high poly geometry into Substance Painter. Please note that I will be jumping back and forth between Substance Painter and Maya a few times. All right, so let's see what I'm working with here. I have a low poly phone that is completely UV'd, and I have a high poly phone. I'm going to go ahead and export these two files by going up to File, Export Selection, uh, this first model I am going to call Eiffel Tower Phone underscore low, and I have materials set to off, and I'm exporting this as an OBJ. I'm going to do the same thing with the high poly file, export selection, and I'm just going to rename the back part to say hi. So I'll have Eiffel Tower Phone underscore hi, and export selection. All right, now that I have those two pieces of geometry, I'm going to go ahead and open up Substance Painter. I'm going to come up here to File, New, select file and select my low poly geometry. Hit open, hit okay. To open up the baking, I'm gonna go ahead and click the little croissant up on the top right. And to start off the bake in the high, I'm gonna come over to this high definition meshes, click this little page icon and load in the high geometry. Just gonna hit okay or open. And without changing any settings, I'm just gonna click bake selected textures. So you may notice a few little issues right off the bat. I can click this little icon over here just to kind of turn off the cage and you can kind of see what's happening. On this dial, for instance, you can see uh, this kind of stretching that's going on. If I move the camera around, you can see similar stretching in other places. Now it is a bit low resolution purely because the output size is set to 512. I can go ahead and click 2K and hit bake one more time and you'll start seeing some higher texture density. Now these issues are a lot more apparent. So what can we do to fix these? Uh, these issues have to do with this max frontal distance and max rear distance. These issues specifically are due to the rear distance. Now, what does that mean? Max frontal distance has to do with how far the cage has to travel forward. You can see this like so. And the max rear distance has to do with how far the bake has to travel backwards. So since we're having this issue due to it not being able to travel far enough, let's go ahead and just try to increase this number. Now, depending on your model, depending on how close or different your high poly and low poly geometry are, uh, this number can vary. I'm going to go ahead and just change this from 0.01 to maybe 0.05 and just see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and click bake. And that looks like it's actually working pretty well. I can hit this little icon up here to just turn off everything. And now I'm just kind of looking at the model and notice most of those issues are actually gone. So I think I'll call that good. Now the next issue I'm sort of seeing is uh, despite me modeling a high poly phone, I still have these pretty strong facets in this dial on these buttons. So what can I do to fix that? If I jump back to Maya, let's take a look at my high poly geometry. I'm just going to click the high poly and isolate it for a sec. Now the way this phone is modeled, I can actually hit three on it. And since everything is subdivided correctly, I can actually bake this geometry kind of like so. In order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate this geometry really quick. I'm going to name this with high underscore sub div two, because I'm going to go ahead and subdivide this two times. And I'm just going to hide those two pieces of geo just to keep nice and organized. So to subdivide this geometry, I'm just going to go ahead and select everything, come up here to mesh smooth, open up the dialog box, and I want to go ahead and subdivide it with two levels and click apply. So you'll notice if I click all this geometry, now everything's all subdivided and everything's pretty smooth and good looking. I'm going to go ahead and select this new group, come up here to file, export selection, and I'm just going to add to this name. I'm going to type in sub div two and export selection. It's going to take a little bit longer just because it's a bit more dense. Now I'm just going to jump back into Substance Painter. Uh, I no longer need this high poly one since that's the old. So I'm going to hit the little minus to get rid of it and add in the newer one, Subdiv 2. Hit open and just hit bake one more time. 
And you should notice all of these are now becoming a lot more round and it starts looking a bit nicer. So the last thing I want to cover is how to best utilize this ID mask. I'm going to come over here to this left and I'm just going to turn off all of these and turn on only ID. That way we're only baking the ID map from now on. Looking at these settings, you have this dropdown and right now it's set to material color. If I hit this dropdown over here and hit ID, notice how nothing's actually baking into this. So there's a few ways we can utilize this. One way I can hit this little dropdown, change this from material color to mesh ID slash polygroup, and I'll just hit bake. Now what's happening is if I go back to Maya, uh, every one of these pieces of geometry is separate. And because of that, I'm actually getting those separate pieces of geometry as individual mask. Now, depending on how complicated your geometry may be, uh, you may end up getting way too many masks. So one way to resolve this, I'm going to go ahead and select this group. I'm going to Shift D just to duplicate it. And I'm actually going to combine some of this based on the materials that I already know they should be. So I'm just going to hit underscore combine geometry by material. I'll hide the old one. And I have already gone through and grouped these individual things. So all of these pieces are supposed to be plastic. Just going to go ahead and combine those. All of these are bronze. Going to go ahead and combine those. All of this is black metal. Going to combine those. And this last one, silver, just going to combine those. And I don't actually need these empty groups anymore. I'm going to get rid of them. And I'm just going to drag these back into that same folder. So now this group only has five pieces of geometry. And we're going to go ahead and export this one more time. Export selection. I'm just going to keep adding on to this name so I know the difference between everything. So this one is combine geometry by material. It's export selection. All right, so I'm going to come back to Substance Painter. Uh, I do need to swap out the geometry, so I'm going to click this common settings one more time. I can remove the old one and plug in the combined geometry by material. Hit open and go ahead and click bake one more time. So notice now how I have even less colors. There should only be five colors in this file. Now the last way I want to show how to make mask is to use materials. I'm going to go ahead and hide the previous one we just made, and I'm going to duplicate the high subdivision. And I'm just going to add material assignments. I'll unhide that. And instead of combining this geometry, what I'm going to do is assign a separate material for every single one of them. I'm just going to go ahead and use a default Lambert. Go ahead and drag a Lambert in here. And I'm going to duplicate this five times just to match the five different materials that I already have lined up. Uh, on every single one of these Lamberts, I'm just going to come up here to color and just assign a unique color to it. And back into the group, just going to assign one color per group or geometry. So I can just right click on these materials and do assign to material selection. I'll just get every one of them. And if I close the hypershade, notice that I just have these colors kind of like so. I'm going to grab this group, do file, export selection. And just like before, I'm going to add to this name. I'll call this material assignment. On this one particularly, since I am utilizing materials, I want to make sure I enable this material and have it set to on. And I'll click export selection. All right, I'm going to go back to Substance Painter and rebake this. Now I need to subtract this old high poly geo, plug in this new one called material assignments, and back on the ID tab, I need to change this from mesh ID slash polygroup and change it to material color. Hit bake select. And notice if I actually compare the two, it actually mimicked the same colors that I baked. And there we go. Enjoy.